Just ticked over 10 a.m. So um, I'm going to introduce myself and a few more people will be joining us, but I'll start to chat. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Nicola O'Brien. I'm from the Australian Computing Academy, and we're really excited to be here today to have a chat with you about coding. Um, welcome back, everyone who's coming back from last week. And if you're new this week, we're pleased to have you here. Uh, you might feel like you are in a one-on-one -on -one call with us because of the way WebEx works, that you can't see the other people, but that's okay. We've got a group of students and teachers joining us today. So even though you can't see who's in the call, we can see everybody. Um, and for the best way to communicate during today's workshop is for you to put messages in the chat. Please make sure when you do that, that you click send to all panelists. And that way everyone who's running today's session can see the message and we can all reply to you and get an idea of what you're working on. Um, Carsten, would you like to say hello and introduce yourself? Yes, um, very good morning, everyone. Um, Carsten Schulz here, I'm very excited to be with you. And I think we've got some, some very exciting activities prepared for you. Um, so uh, pen and paper uh, will be wonderful to have and um, there will be lots of interactive things for you to do this morning. Right. Okay. Now everyone should be able to see the screen at this point. We've got a picture of the turtle on the screen. Um, the turtle is one of the tools that we use to make up using code. Uh, but just as a warm up and to say hi in the chat, if you have an animal in your house that is other than a turtle, or you maybe you do have a turtle, I don't know, please jump in and pop in the chat. Let us know if you have any animals in your house and say hello. Um, and students, we'd also love to know what grade you're in. So please let us know what grade you are. Thank you. I can see Tieran's in grade three. Welcome. That's a great age to start coding and having some fun. Anyone else who's jumping in the chat, let us know if you have animals in your house. I have two dogs and one cat. And they're all being very quiet right now. But you might hear them in the background as we work through the session. Um, and, ah, Olivia. Hi, Olivia. Olivia, if you want to let everybody, all the adults running the session today, um, no, you can click message all panelists and we'll all see that. But we have some more people joining the call now. Welcome along, everybody. Um, we're just warming up and asking you to pop in the chat. Let us know what grade you are and whether you have any pets in the house. Also, if you want to let us know what school you're at, we'd love to know. We're at Darling and from up in Sydney. Okay, now I can see Carsten's screen at the moment. Um, just to give you a little idea of what we're working on today, welcome students from your Lawn North Primary School. Um, just to give you an idea of what we're working on today, if we can go forward a couple of screens, Carsten. We're going to be exploring the idea of lines and angles and shapes, and we'll be doing some coding with that. Um, let me know in the chat, was anyone with us last week? You can say what, yes or no, and that will help us. Last week, we spent a little bit of time talking about turns and angles in our code. And if you weren't here last week, that's absolutely fine too. We're going to cover a lot of the same ideas today, but you can see some pictures here. We had a little game last week with the Australian animals turning things to get to different points, but that's okay. From what I can see, everyone joining us today is a new student. So I'm going to move on to the next slide and have a look at right angles. One thing we would like you to remember for today when we get our turtle to turn, um, one turn that we'll use a lot is called a right angle. Does anyone know where right angle, what shape has right angles in it? You can pop it in the chat and you can see one on the screen. So if you have explored rectangles and squares, the corners of a rectangle and a square that you can see on screen are called right angles. And if we want to measure them with a protractor, we'd see they're 90 degrees. So keep that one file away for later. We'll move on to the next slide, please, Carsten. Yes, and um, this is our first activity. And um, for this activity, you, the student, you will play the role of the turtle. Okay, so you will need a pen and a sheet of paper in front of you. And if you have <clears throat> a user ruler, but if you have a steady hand, you can also do without one. 
<clears throat> so just give you a little, a little bit of time in order to get pen and paper in front of you. Um, can be, for example, a sheet, a four sheet of paper and um, a pen or a pencil. All right. So already got one. Wonderful. Thank you, Tiran. And okay, so this is the first activity. So you look at this um, image here, there's the turtle. So you're playing the role of the turtle. So we would like to ask you to start in the middle of the paper. And that's because so you can draw in all directions that we're going to give you. And um, if you remember, the turtle always has a direction. So your turtle is currently facing to the right. So when we give you a move command, your turtle is going to move to the right. Okay, all clear? Any questions? Okay, so your first mission is... It's coming. Oh, oh. So <laughs> move the turtle forward by about one centimeter. Okay, so it's facing to the right and move forward by one centimeter. You got that? Okay, so what's the result going to look like? It should like something like this. Okay, so your, your turtle was facing right and you moved forward by one centimeter. You all got that right? Anyone had issues with that? All right, all good, fantastic. Then, Nicola. Hello. <laughs> okay, so the next instruction, everybody, keeping your pencil where it was, continue where, from where the turtle is and move forward by two centimetres this time. Give you a moment to do that. Okay, everyone got that? Let's have a look and see where our turtle is up to now. Excellent. So, so far, three centimetres forward. Good work, everybody. If you're just joining the call, um, we're just doing a little activity with a pen and paper. It's okay if you don't have a pen and paper with you. You can follow along and we have another activity shortly that you can join in with too. All right. That brings us to the next activity. Um, continue to where the turtle is, okay, but turn left 90 degrees. So remember the, the right angle and we'd like you to turn left 90 degrees now. Just turn the turtle, not yourself. I should clarify that. Okay, got that. So um, how does it look like now? Something like this. So the turtle hasn't moved. Okay, it's still in the same position. It just has turned and it's now facing up. Got that? All right, then that brings us to Nicola and the next step. Okay. Are we getting the hang of this? I think we are. I've got a good feeling from the messages I'm seeing in the chat, everybody. So remembering that we've just turned our next step, move forward. There's two instructions here. Move forward by two centimetres and then turn left another 90 degrees. Okay. Let's have a look and see where that's got us to now on our page. Wow, okay, so you can break it down. You can see we turned and then we moved forward the way the turtle was looking by two centimeters. And now he's turned left again. Back to you, Carsten. Right, so what could be next? Oh dear, continue to where the turtle is and move forward by six centimeter. That's quite a distance. And because it's a slow turtle, it will take some time, right? Six centimeters, quite a distance. Now, where might that get us to? Have a look. Here. Okay, so we started up here and then we moved left one, two, three, four, five, six. Or from the position of the turtle, because it was already facing to the left, it just moved forward. Okay, so when we um, draw with the turtle, we always look through the eyes of the turtle. Okay. But now, Nicola has got something for you. I do. Are you ready for the next one? <laughs> it's 
Someone in the chat's letting me know that she would like to go faster. Okay, Ava, are you ready? Really? <laughs> Next step. Let's go, Carsten. We're going to speed it up. Just asking. Okay. Oh, here we go, Ava. Just what you wanted. Um, start with where you had your pencil just before. Turn left 90. Move forward two centimetres. Turn left another 90. And move forward three centimetres. And we will give you a moment to do all of that. Tieran, don't worry if yours is looking kind of bad. That's all right. Just keep looking at the instructions on screen and you can have another go later. This one is hard, isn't it, Nicola? Well, there's a few instructions all together, but I think if you go one line at a time, we can do it. Have a go. Okay, welcome anyone. Uh, we've got some new people joining us. Just have a listen along. We're just making some shapes with the turtle. Should we do the big reveal, Carsten? Absolutely. Here is the big okay. reveal. Ha! Ah. <laughs> so we've got two questions for you, and you would probably expect that we ask you where the turtle is, but now we want to know in which direction it's facing. What do you think? So if you're just joining, pop your answers in the chat and let us know which way your turtle is pointing at the moment, left or right or to the top or to the bottom. I think, are you ready to show us what it does, Carsten? And also put in the chat, please watch. Oh, thank you, Olivia. Olivia's saying her turtle's pointing left. We'll have a look and see in a moment. Is anyone, is anyone going to tell us in the chat what shape you've drawn? Okay. That's okay, Tieran. Don't worry. There will be other activities that you will probably enjoy. Okay, let's review okay. the shape and the direction, Nicola. Yes. Okay, let's have a look. This is the shape that we just made, pretending that we were the computer and we were following the instructions. So we started off in the middle of the bottom edge. We went along, turned left, and made the right-hand side of the rectangle. And then that six centimetres was the big journey to make the top side. We turned left again, came down on the left-hand side, and came right back to where we started again. So that's an example of the kind of instructions we follow when we draw a shape. Let's have a look at the next thing and see what that would look like if we gave those instructions to the computer. Okay, when we do coding, this is how those instructions look when we put them into the coding language that we're going to have a look at shortly. And you can read those instructions from the top to the bottom. You can see each step set out nice and clearly there. Instead of centimetres now, we're talking about steps and you can see 50 steps in the computer's language means one square. Okay. So what we're going to do now is move on to another activity, which is round two. It's coming up on screen. Okay, so what we're going to do now is imagine this turtle who you can see is waiting to go onto the number grid. And I want you to have a follow the instructions we've put there forward, forward, turn right, and forward. And tell me which number square do you think the turtle would land on? And pop your answer into the chat. So we've got one person that says that they've ended up on section eight. Some people think nine. Uh -huh. That's good. Okay. Some think eight. 
Well, I have a surprise for everybody. Should we go on the next slide and have a look Absolutely. and see what happens? Okay. <laughs> Now, this is the way. Now, humans and computers sometimes interpret instructions differently. But for our turtle, our turtle went forward onto the first square, square one, and it went forward again onto square two. Remember when it turns right, it doesn't actually travel anywhere. It just turns on the spot. So turn right, it stayed on square two and turned. And then one more forward instruction took it onto square seven. And that's how we ended up where we did. Okay. So, Nicola, you're saying the turning is not moving, isn't it? It's just staying on the same place. Mm, it's like if I was standing up in my bedroom and I turned from the door to look out the window. I would turn on the spot. And oh, then interesting. my next instruction, I'd move forward. Okay. okay. That makes sense, Jake. Yes. Good one. Good on you. Would you like to do the next one, Nicola? <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. Let's look at another one. Okay. Oh, I think oh, we've jumped too. Gave it away. Sorry, my slides. <laughs> no one saw that. Okay. No one saw that. Pretend your eyes were closed. Okay. Here's another set. Let's work them through. So forward and forward. Turning right. Forward. Turn left and two forwards. Now remember the directions. You imagine that you are the turtle. So you are turning left, not the way you see it on screen. But put yourself in the turtle's position. Does anyone want to have a go and tell me where you get to? Olivia's had a guess. Well done, Olivia. Mm -hmm. Number five, number nine. Mm -hmm. Have another try, Olivia. Marie's had a guess and Jake, well done everyone who's having a go. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's nice to see everyone's Absolutely trying. Fantastic. Okay. And Jake saying nine. Okay. Shall we go and have a look at where that turtle went to? I think we can. Let's try. Okay, this time. The first part of the journey looks the same as before. So the first forward instruction took us onto square one, the second one onto square two. The turn right, we're still on square two, but we moved to point to the turtle's right. Then we traveled to square seven. Now at this point, the turtle was actually looking down towards the bottom of the page. So a left turn for the turtle points him towards square eight. And then we had two more forward instructions. That's a tricky one. Everyone who said they got to square number nine, well done. If you were thinking that we got to another square, have a look at those instructions again and see if you can figure out what the turtle was doing differently to where you thought it would go. Oh, great. Great you like this, Tieran. Wonderful. Oh, we're Thank glad you. to know. Okay. Next now, one. Um, yeah, we're going to have a look at another one and we'll, this one's got a lot of words. Oh my. Okay. This is building on an idea that we thought about last week, which was computers often make decisions. They use the word if a lot. So when you play any kind of game on your computer, think about your favorite game and think about the coders that made that game and how they might use the word if. So I'll start with an example. When I play Candy Crush, if I line up three candies the same color in a row, it clears them from the screen. Carson, do you play any games that have ifs in them? Oh, oh, lots of games, yes. Um, yeah. Um, Anyone can think of help out Carson with an example from a game. All you sorts of decisions, like how many lives you have left and, and um, how many units you have on, on the screen and these kind of things. And then saying you can't have any more. You've had 50 and that's it. That's right. And I know in Minecraft, when I walk around, if I see a diamond block, I try and mine it. So if is really helpful. When we see it with the turtle, if will help us make decisions. So let's do it together. The first instruction says forward. So I land on square one. Can you see my mouse? I'm following with the mouse here, okay? Oh, good, I can see that, yes. The next instruction says forward. 
So I'll go to square two. Then I have a decision that says, if I am on an odd number, turn right, else go forward. Now two is not an odd number, is it? Two is an even number. So if everyone wants to jump in the chat, should I go right or should I go forward from number two? I keep wiggling my mouse so you can see where we are on field number two. We will we'll follow your instructions, kids. So you tell us, we're on number two. Should I go right or should I go forward? Thanks, Marie. Marie says I should go forward. Tieran says forward. I'm going to wait and see if someone else jumps in and then I'll make my final choice. Anyone else? Do we think that forward is the way to go? Uh, okay, I think I'm going to run on the instructions of these two. Olivia is telling me I should go forward as well. Okay, that's it. We'll go forward. And thank you, Oscar. Thank you. Now, my next instruction says forward again, and I don't have to make a decision on that one. So I'll get to number four. Here's another choice we have to make. If I'm on an odd number, turn left, otherwise forward. Do it again, everyone, jump in the chat. Let me go, should I go left or forward? Darren says forward. Darren seems to be pretty good at this game. I think we'll follow his instructions and go forward. Mm -hmm. So, so that, I go forward, hey? You go forward, you're on square number five. Now, the last two instructions say right and then forward, and there's no word if for that one, so everybody has to do that. So go ahead, everyone, and work out which square we're going to finish our journey on. Excellent. We've got a few people. Well done, everyone who's guessing 10. Nice work. So we've followed the turtle's journey and we've finished up on square number 10. Now, I think we have a few slides explaining that answer, Carsten, so we can okay. step through those. Yes, and there. Yeah. That's okay, and this one. was the final journey. You can Good see job. the black lines show what could have happened, what the other choices were on those two ifs. But we followed the red line and we got to number 10. Well done. Okay, the next challenge is something a little bit different. We want you to have a turn. So here's my turtle. You can use the instructions F for forward, R for right, and L for left. In the chat, I want you to have a go at writing instructions to get the turtle to the cat. You start with a simple one. So there's the cat, there's the dog, there's the fish, and there's the pig. And we want oh. to go here. Jake, well done, Jake. Jake's shared that. So if you're not ready. Well, that was really quick. Well done, Jake. Um, now, interesting. Tyrion, okay, go, Olivia, go. I just saw something from Tiran. Now, if uh, we can see the chat and you can't see the chat. I've just remembered. That's great. Mm -hmm. So Jake gave us one version of an instruction and Oscar gave us a different version. I'll talk about those in a moment. Yeah. Carsten, can you write on your screen? Um, I can. It's something I can, I can. Um, I'm going to ask. I need to approve that. So, yep, that should be possible now. Okay, so I'm going to annotate. So I'm looking at the chat and one person wrote an instruction which said, Oh dear, this is going to be hard. Forward, 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 forward. Okay, please excuse my messy writing. But they said the turtle should go forward, 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 forward. And that works beautifully for us. That's the correct instruction. The next one someone said to me was you should go forward, something like this, four times four. Now that also works, one, two, three, four. And that's what we're going to talk about very soon, is that there are different ways you can tell your computer to do the same thing. And both of these instructions will work to get the turtle to the cat. One of them you have to type forward four times, and one of them you can say do something times four. Now, 
if the turtle's going to the cat, that okay, either way is helpful for us. But can you imagine if the cat was 100 squares away? Pop in the chat and let me know which one you would find easiest. Would you rather write F 100 times or would you rather do something like this? If the cat was 100 squares away, which instruction do you think is easier? Yeah, a lot of people are thinking once you get up to maybe 100 times, this one on the bottom might be an easier way to do the instructions. And I think I agree. Okay, let's have a look at the next journey. This one's a little bit trickier. We would like you. Oh dear, now we have to exit the annotation, Nicola. Yes. Uh, yes, let's yep. fix that and here. Okay, Ooh. next instruction for everybody is to get the turtle to the dog. And the turtle's starting in a different place this time. The turtle is off to the right hand side. So let's have a go at getting the turtle to the dog, everybody, and pop your answer in the chat. Yes, cute little puppy. Mm, wonderful dog. Aha, uh -huh. we've got the first. Well done, Jake. Jake's got the hang of it, so he's got a very nice set of instructions in the chat for us. Nice. Okay. So Jake's given us a nice instruction which said, and Olivia's given us a nice instruction. Oh, let's look at Oscar's instruction. Interesting. Oscar, you're close. I think. Oh, wow. There's so many different ways to get the dog, get the turtle to the puppy. I like that one too, Taryn. You've gone on this on sort of a scenic route. So People yeah, are writing walk around the cat. correct answers to this one. Um, Carsten, I might read you. I wonder if I can do this. Yes. Let's follow Tieran's instructions. So we go forward two. Mm -hmm. Up here. So one and two. And then we turn right. Oh, so, okay. so we go forward two, then we turn right. Yes. And then we go forward four times. That would oh, be actually. We're off the side, aren't we? Yes, we are. Maybe there's one more turn that you want to put in there, Tiran. Okay, let's try another example. Keep going, keep working on it. Um, I can see. So let's try. Jake had a suggestion. Should we try that one? Uh, yes, I'm following your instructions. Tell me what. Okay, I so Carsten, the instruction from Jake is as follows. Yes. Four times five. One, two, three. Four, five. Turn left. I turned left. Forward just once. Bing. Hey, look at that. Well done, Jake. That one worked. Now, if your instructions that you're working on at home look a little bit different, that's okay. We're going to try one more from Oscar. Mm. Okay, let's go. Oscar says we should go forward. 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 Left. Okay. Forward. Okay. Forward. Bing. Oopsie. Okay, I'll still have another go. Remember when you turn, it doesn't move you any particular direction. You stay on the spot. Think about another turn in that one. Have another go. <laughs> so it's tricky. It takes a while to figure this stuff out. The next ones we want to show you before we get into some coding. Let's think about this. Actually, maybe, Carsten, why don't we have a look at slide the slide 40? The next slide? Um, no, we're going to skip a few and go straight to 40. This one? Which is the one. Yes, that one. Okay. Because I'm keen to get onto some coding on the computer too. So we'll, this is our last example before we talk about some of the other ideas. Um, everyone have a go at following this kind of notation. So we're using numbers and letters together now and let me know 
where the turtle finishes now. Have a look at where the turtle starts right up here at the top left. And we're going to go six forward. Well done, Tiran. Um, pardon? Tiran, Tiran already posted the reply, the answer. Oh, and Jake as well. I'm fine. And Jake, well done. You're so fast. So six forward. Kind of right. Levi, Le Levi, fantastic. Well done, everybody. Well done, Olivia and Oscar. Okay. You know what? I think we're ready to move on. I think we've done a great job thinking about these direction instructions and we've started to use numbers to repeat things. So, Carsten, I think we're ready to move on and I'll hand it back to you. Yes, thank you, Nicola. And well done, everyone. You're fantastic. So you, you already know what I'm going to tell you, um, but now I'm going to talk about it a little bit from the turtle perspective when we look at the code. So um, what you have done here, what Nicola has shown you are loops. And, and you did it quite intuitively. You said four times F is forward, forward, forward. So in Blockly, we have a special code that does that for us. And this is called the repeat block. And um, here on this slide, we are drawing a little triangle. Okay. And the way we do it is we are moving forward and then we're turning left 120 degrees, not 90 degrees, because we're not we're not drawing a square, but a triangle. And and we're repeating this three times. And if you remember, and you see it here on the screen, a triangle has three sides, and that means we need three repetition. Now, if we want to draw a square, for example, what do you think how many repetitions would we need? Would we what would we write in the repeat block here in this number instead of the three? What do you think if we wanted to make a square? just in terms of that number. Pop your answer in the chat. Ah, uh, yep, exactly. Well done, Oscar. It would be a four up there. So we look at the number of sides that we want to draw and that gives us the number of repeats. Now, um, we could also draw a triangle without a loop. We would just have to then write these blocks again and again. So we would need to move forward, turn left 120 degrees, move forward, turn left, move forward, turn left. And that's just a little bit tedious, um, having to repeat yourself all over again. But for all intents and purposes, that's the same thing. So this code in the repeat block, repeat and move and turn three times is the same as this. So you can write either, you might want to start without the repeat block, and then um, introduce the repeat block later. It's your, your choice. Okay, so you've got a question for you. If you look at this code here, and you see this very strange triangle where the last line is drawn twice, for whatever reason we do that, but what do you think? Which code block is going to produce this shape? Is it block A, B, or C? What do you think? Pop your answer in the chat. Mm -hmm. Somebody says A, someone says C, uh -huh. Oscar says C, and Tiran says B, okay, yes. Okay, so uh, let me explain it. So there are four lines being drawn, okay, although it's a triangle, but we're drawing that, that first line twice, which means we are actually repeating four times. Okay, so it would be answer B or C. Now the question is, what do we start with? Do we first move or do we first turn? And when I look at this drawing is we are first moving. Okay, so we're moving forward and then we're turning. And that means that C is the correct answer. Okay, so I, um, I have to tell you B and C are very close because they are both repeating four times. The only difference is that in B, we are first turning and then moving, and in C, we're doing the opposite. We're first moving and then turning. So subtle differences. Um, yes, you are very close, Tiran, and there are more opportunities for you. Okay, so what do you think here? Uh, it's, it's not a question. We come to another question later. That's just to show you the equivalence of the code. So repeat four times, move forward and turn left, 
is the same thing as doing eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight down here. Okay, so I think everyone agrees that the top here is much shorter. So when we code, we're always looking for a short, short way of doing things. Okay, another question for you. Now this does not have a loop, just the blocks. Carsten, I just want to give a shout out yes. while people are looking at this code to Ava as well. I've just seen she's been working really hard and answering all the questions in the Q&A channel. So oh. I think she's got a trouble accessing the chat, but she's got some great answers in here. Oh, so okay. well done. Great. I didn't see that in the chat. Well done, Ava. What's the coding website called? Yes, I'm going to tell you in, in just a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, um, when you look at the code here, what, what is the result? Moving, turning, moving, turning, moving, turning, moving, turning. Would it be A, B, and C? And um, a little hint, um, watch out in which direction we are turning. Are we turning right or are we turning left? Okay, so I might reveal it. Um, so we are moving forward four times. Okay, we've got uh, some suggest A and some suggest B. Okay, so no one suggested C, so that's correct because C is only just three lines. We're drawing four lines, so it can't be C. And the only difference between A and B is the direction to which we're turning. So in A, we're turning left, and in B, we're turning right from the perspective of the turtle. But our code here says that we're always turning right. And that makes B the correct answer. Well done, everyone. So here's the question. Now that's the same code as before. Okay, same code. I want you to tell me, to tell us, which is the correct repeat block on the right that does the same thing as the code on the left? Is it A, B, or C? What do you think? Uh -huh. Check if it's B. Tyrion suggests A. Tyrion, have a look again. Which direction are we turning in A? What do you think? Yes, in, it, exactly A turns left, but the code on our right that we want to, to do here, what does that say? It turns right. So from that perspective, can it be A? Oh yeah, <laughs> can't be A, right? So small things Which sometimes, part? very close. Uh -huh. So the correct answer is it's B. Again, it's not C because C is just repeating three times, B is repeating four times, and it's turning right. And that is what our code here on the left is doing. Okay, well done, everyone. Now, I have a question for you. What we're going to do uh, next is we're going to look at how we can draw a beautiful Christmas tree, like the one that you see here. Now, when you think about it, what you would already know about the turtle, how it works, and how you use it, what would you think are the things that you need to master, that you need to know in order to draw a tree with a turtle? What, what do you think? What is the, the things that you need to, to, to do in order to draw a tree? Yeah, so we've already seen some of the elements of the tree that we can make with turtle on the last slides. Have a go in the chat and tell us what what shapes or what skills you need in total to be able to create this work of art. Oh, a nice answer, Tyrion. Tyrion's identified uh -huh. four different shapes that we have in the tree. Well done. Great. And, and Tyrion, can I ask you, direction? Yes, you need to be able to ma manage direction because the turtle needs to turn. Very good. Do you think you need to be able to draw a line? I guess that's what everything starts with, isn't it, Kirsten? Sort of, doesn't it? I mean, when we want to draw a triangle, we start with a line, don't we? Mm -hmm. And and that is something I would like to show you now, how we draw a Christmas tree starting with a line. Okay, so that's just an activity where you can watch. 
and later your teacher can give you access to that system and then you can do the whole thing yourself. All right, wow. let me show you. So we go. Yeah. So teachers, I'll just put the link in the chat. And if you haven't seen that website before, you might want to explore it with your students afterwards. Okay, so we've made this little programming challenge for you. And it starts with a nice video. Just going to play it for you. Enjoy. drawing a tree and then we're decorating it and uh, you already know about the turtle okay so here's the thing so our tree has five triangles you've seen them before so we, we first need to learn how to make one triangle okay and uh, you have to ask yourself so what do you need to draw a triangle and we already mentioned it earlier is we need to start with a line okay and you already know the move forward block in, in turtle. Okay, so here we've got a, a short line. It's a bit funny. So it's going to be a very small tree, but we can make it bigger. So let's have a look here. Drawing a line. Okay, so what do we see here? We have a little move forward block. You've seen that already mm, previously. And um, you can, and I just need to move a window here, you can click on the run button. And then this system executes the code and draws the shape for you and you will be able to draw and see this line down here. Okay, so that's how we start with a triangle. And we can make it a small triangle if we just say perhaps 50, 50 steps, and then the line's half the length, or we can make it longer. But let me just stay with 100, that's a good number. Okay, right. The good thing is <clears throat> when, when you've done your coding, you can click on the mark button and then we are going to check the code and tell you whether it was right or not. <clears throat> oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> oh, you, your program did not draw the line correctly. Maybe it is too short or too long. Ah, my program drew the following. Okay, right. So what was that supposed to do? Maybe 50. Should I try that again? Oh, still too short. Should have done better, should have paid better attention. Oh, I just had done it 20. Okay, let's try 20. And mark it. Look, it's no problem, we, it's just feedback, it's not a bad thing. And yay, my first line has the right length. Okay, we've done the first line, it was supposed to be 20. All right, now, then we want to draw a longer line. Now we want 50 steps. So here's the instructions, change the number from 20 to 50, already done that. And then you click the run button and now we've got a line. And then the moment of truth comes, we click on mark and, oh, we, we see confetti. That's always a good thing when we see confetti. Okay, we've drawn the right length, which means our triangle can get a little bit bigger um, and therefore our tree is also going to be nice and big. Right, by clicking up here, we go to the next question. Okay, now we can um, turn and move. And let me just reset this here, what we have, because I've already played with that before. So we move forward and then we click the turn, turn button or the turn block and you see how it snaps in. Okay, so when it's snapped, then that's good. We want it to snap in. So we move forward and then we turn left 120 degrees. And what will that get us? That will get us a line and then a turned turtle. And if you remember, when we turn left, we don't move, we just stay in place. But what we can do next is we can move, we can turn, and then we can move again. And this way, see down here, we get a triangle that has two sides. Okay, right. And if we continue this, we move and we turn and we move and we turn and we move. Yeah, that's exhausting. Um, what do we get? We get a, ta-da, we get a triangle. 
Okay, all right, we've got a triangle now. Right, and then we're going to put this into a loop, and that's what you've seen earlier, no? So instead of repeating our move and turn blocks, we just put one move and one turn block in a repeat block, and then we repeat it three times. And that is going to be, here's our code without the loop, and here is the code with the loop, and that is making exactly the same thing. Okay, right. So uh, Nicola has posted the link, and I'm quickly going back to the slides, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a preview of what's coming next. So we are making then a filled triangle. Okay, so you can see that here. We can fill it with a color for our choice, uh, for example, green. Yes, so you see how the tree is slowly coming together. And then we are making two triangles. And you see that here on the left. All right. And when we can make two triangles, we can make three triangles. One, two, and three. See how the turtle works? Works very hard. Okay. And then we can make four and five. And you see down here, we make the tree, we slimming it so that it's a bit narrow at the top and wider at the bottom. And then we add a stem. You see this here, we're drawing a stem. And then we are drawing something very interesting. We're making the baubles, we're decorating the tree. And now, this is what I wanted to show you. Because mm -hmm. this is very nice. You know how you draw a tree in turtle? Turtle doesn't have a, sorry, not a tree, a, a, a circle. Apologies. How you draw a circle in turtle? What you do is something like this. Let me show you. Look, we're making, we're drawing a line. Okay. But a very short line, and then we're turning the turtle by a few degrees. And if you remember, a, de a circle has 360 degrees. And 36 times 10 is 360. I can make the circle bigger by, for example, putting a 5 in here. Okay. See that? And let's see if I can make it even bigger. Let's see what happens if I put a 10 in here. Let's see if, I, if I'm staying on the canvas. Yes, right. So we can make nice um, circles and fill them with um, with color later on. And you see this in computing often. Um, a, a circle is not what it seems to be. It's just lines after lines after lines. And we draw a lot of these lines. And the computer is doing is good at doing that very quickly. That's cool, Nicola, isn't it? Making a, a making a circle with lines. Who would have thought? I really like making circles with lines. I like to see when my eyes get tricked into thinking it's a circle. So how many sides I can have when it starts to look circly. And we can show you if we if we do um, this here. If we do, for example, just 18 times, but 20 degrees. Okay, Let's see what happens then. Ah, oh, can you see it? Oh, yeah, it still looks quite circular to me. What do people think? Is that one pass as a circle? That's edgy now. Mm, I think that's edgy. A bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, it's we're almost at the end of our webinar, but there's um, a few more things that Nicola and I wanted to show you. And um, we can do artwork with loops. So we just wanted to show you a few examples, and you can make them yourself later if you like. Um, so look at this one here. Okay, so this is using a loop and a variable. And what's happening is at every every turn, the length of the line gets a little bit shorter. Okay, so we've got the length here, and we start with 50. So 50 is up here. And then we, we do a loop that says repeat while the length is greater than zero. Because there's no point in continuing beyond zero, because um, a zero line is just not there. So we move forward 50 steps, and then we turn right 45 degrees, that's this here, and then the line length is reduced by one, so the next line is just 49 steps long, and that's this line. Then we turn again 45 degrees, and this one is 48, 
47, 46, 45, 44, 43, and so on and so forth. And with that, we can generate some beautiful artwork like this. And you can even try that at home with a pen and paper. If you've got a ruler with you, you can try making some of these shapes just by measuring different lengths every turn. And we have another example for you. That's this one. So you can play with the numbers. So you see previously I started with 50 and then decrease the length by 1. I can also start with 40 and decrease the length by 0.5. Okay. And here I turn right 30 degrees. And um, last time I turned right 45. So we can play with these values and we can look at the different results. So this looks like almost like a spiral, Nicola. Nicola, what do you think? I think it looks, yeah, it looks pretty spirally to me. It reminds me a little bit of a spider's web too. Have uh, you seen such things in nature? Ah, yes. Let's have a look. So one of the cool things about these kind of patterns that repeat and change once you start to notice them, you'll start to see them in the world around you as well. Um, and spirals are a beautiful pattern that you might have seen when you go for a walk on the beach, for example. Some shells have spirals in them. Um, and there's a cactus here you can see as well. But Alo, can we zoom in on that one, Karsten? Uh, sorry, Nicola, I was looking at Tiran's message. Thank you, Tiran. Nine minutes left. Good on you. Yes. Um, if you can zoom in on the aloe plant, that would be a cool one to look at. I can like this here yeah so have a look you can see there's a spiral pattern on the plants and all of these leaves nature has decided that i guess the best way for that plant to survive and thrive in nature is to have this repeating swelling spiral pattern um, and even on animals so you can see the ram on the left hand side has a spiral shape in its ear uh, it's horn i'm sorry it's horn so once we start to explore these shapes with code and we can use different lines of code to work on different effects, we can also start to see that nature uses maths in a similar way to create spirals. There are lots of maths in nature. You might see repeating patterns as well. Um, one of my favorite is a snowflake. Mm. So a snowflake has symmetry and repetition. I didn't, I didn't consider the the patterns in cabbage actually i never looked at that before but you're right who likes cabbage? let us know in the chat if you like cabbage or if maybe you like cabbage more that you've, now that you've seen the patterns i love red <laughs> cabbage it's so delicious but i hear I you, like, you like broccoli i love broccoli yeah well i love the patterns in broccoli the little stalks the way the pattern gets repeated over and over so you start with the little pattern and that looks like a miniature version of the bigger pattern Mm. So next time, mm. next time the students eat broccoli, they should really take a closer look, right? I think so. Yes. Don't let anyone tell you off for playing with your food if you start pulling out broccoli. Okay? <laughs> and then you can tell tell it's for science. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, kids, I think those were the big ideas we wanted to talk about today, and we have a little bit of time left. If you have any questions about how we made the shapes or if you'd like to give Carsten any instructions to make any more shapes, he might be able to do that for you oh, 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 using, oh, 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 using drop. Yes, that's a good idea. If you like, good idea, Nicola, I have a playground here and I've got this code from the previous experiment. And if uh -huh. anyone likes, you can give me some values for the length and perhaps for the degrees, and I can draw that here for you. So kids, pop in the chat if you want Carsten to try anything else. Can you change the color as well? Yeah. Oh, that's too hard now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Where do we have the color, Nicola? Do you remember where we put the color? I think it's in the turtle menu. It's in the turtle menu? Yeah, I think ah, so. Ah, look. So there you go. Background color and fill color. Oh, so let's start with the background color. What color would you like? What background color would you like? Background color. Uh, can I have the light blue, please? This one. Or are you asking the my kids? You're probably... Kids, it's your webinar, not mine. Jump in if you would like to. Um... So, what background color would you like? Put it in the in the in the chat, and these and are the colors so have for you. Don't worry about the website. Your teachers will help you out with that. And teachers, we can um, send you some instructions of for how to get started. I'll pop that in the chat now. Okay. So I run this now. See what the back. Oh, great! I like the background color. <sighs> Tom, 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 Tom. 
That's great. Now, the question is, would you like me to reduce the length to perhaps 30? Should we make it shorter? Why not? Try that. And, see. and run this. Hmm. We get a smaller spiral. Okay. Now, what if I'm changing the angle? So let's see. Should I turn 45 degrees? What happens if you do a really um, big number, like maybe 80? Would something Ooh. crazy happen? 80. Let's, let, you mean the length or the degree? I'm thinking about the degree, just to see something. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do 80. So kids, you can change these and nothing will, even if the shape looks really weird, nothing terrible will happen. So mine's gone a bit. Look at this. Think? This is beautiful. Yeah. I might make it bigger. Let's set the length to 50. You can see it better. Oh, look at that. That's pretty nice. I like the way it doubles up on itself. Mm. Okay. We can sell this as artwork. So next yeah. time you are <laughs> say, oh, I've written a computer program for you. All fine. I really like that. Nice. Okay. Oh. So you can try different combinations. And, and, you know, when people say don't try this at home, we would say do try this at home because... <laughs> You just invent and try, and there's nothing dangerous about this. Have a go. Right. I think this is all we have time for today. I think that's right. Thanks for coming along, everybody. We really appreciate you taking the time and dropping by, and we hope that you have a go making your own art with the turtle as well now that you've seen what it can do and you understand a little bit about what, how the instructions work. The best thing you can go now is just experiment and try and do as much as you can. And if you get in the classroom, send us some pictures of what you make. We'd love to see. I would love to see those. Yes. I can't mm. wait to see all the different Christmas trees and artwork. Okay. Indeed. Thank you very much. We wish you a wonderful day. Um, until next time.